shoes. They'll be, you know, you know, they when the guy comes, they they hide his shoe and then he has to pay money to get the shoe back. These are, yeah, it's a mad one. Yeah, even Mendy as well, you know, henna and stuff Is it like that. Men to wear men? It's not haram, no. In fact, it's it's encouraged for men to wear henna, but on the beard. You know, if the beard goes white, on the hand, it's not haram, like because henna is actually cool, isn't it? Like, um, it actually, it's one of those herbal medicines. You know, if you've got like feet problem and stuff like that, if you put henna on your feet, it can actually help. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's actually it's like a herbal thing, and it can it can actually help. It can actually help. But so coming back to this, the cultural thing. Is, is different. Now, whatever culture, uh, cultural practice there is in these, um, you know, marital practices, it's fine, it's all right in Islam, unless if it contradicts Islam. So Islam is fine with it. If it contradicts Islam, then you can't do it. Yeah, for example, if a cultural practice in Morocco is, oh, the, a, a man and a woman that aren't married sit together then Islam would say that's not permissible. Yeah, what's the, what's the reason? Yeah, so it's good, and this is very important to, to, to distinguish culture from religion. Yeah, these, these are the two things. So that, so the four schools of thought, they will only differ in having a wali. Like the, the Hanafis, they will say you don't necessarily have to have a wali. Like so what's what's the wali, wali. Yeah. So, so there's four schools of thought. Yeah. You got the Hanafi, you got the Shafi, you got the Maliki, and you got the Hanbali. These are four schools of thought. Hanbali. Yeah. So these are four schools of thought. The analogy is like four streams that go into one river or one sea. Yeah. So they are all. They are four schools of thought that have. If you add them all together, they are all encompassing in how they have preserved the prophethood yeah, and the life of the Prophet So it's actually a blessing. It's a blessing in disguise yeah, that we, that Allah put a system in place that mashallah. And in fact, there's, think about it. You've got different people doing different things, but Islam has a way of still bringing everyone together and still legitimizing that and having a system in place. So would you consider Shia is Muslim? Shia. Shias, uh, there's different branches of Shias as well. So some, some Shias that don't invalidate, for example, the Quran, some Shias will say, oh, no, the, the Quran that we have is incomplete. We can't accept that. Yeah. So if somebody starts putting a question mark on the Quran, no, you're gone. Just to let you know, I'm, I'm, of course, I'm still learning. I'd love to learn more. No, no, of course, of course. No, no, you, you ask what you want. No, 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 look, the thing is, the Prophet ﷺ said, asking good questions is half of one's knowledge. And the thing is, look, I'm not here to tell you, you can ask a question about this and not that. Whatever comes to your mind and whatever you want to ask, you ask. Only because it's better if, you, if like, someone asks it rather than you just stay there and you make your own answers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. That's how people leave this No, you know what? No, even if you feel uh, th this question is risky, I'm, I'm actually giving you open Open rain, ask any question you want. Okay, so there's one, uh, I come across a lot of Islamic videos, right? And then there's one that really, and I know you're gonna probably start laughing, but there's one, there's some that really make me question that a lot. So there's one where it was like how, uh, if, you, if you get married, right? there's a certain way you have to sleep with your wife, stuff like that. Um, so I came across one video and said, oh, you have to do it this way. If the woman does it like this, it makes you gay or something like that. Uh, it makes you more feminine or something like that. Okay, now bear in mind, when somebody says this, uh, do this and do that, these are recommendations. Yeah, these are recommendations based upon the person's understanding and the cultural understanding. Yeah, now uh, without being crude, um, like, like over here in this country, you'll see the way some people show, show affection. Yeah, if I was to, for example, talk about French kissing in this country, people are going to be like, yeah, standard, so what? That's, that's how you show affection. If I was to go to Pakistan and be like, uncle, how come you don't French, French kiss auntie? Yeah, I haven't finished that sentence and the slippers come off. You see, he's halfway up with the slipper. When the sentence, when the sentence finishes, I finished. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's exactly it. Do you see? That's, I think that uncle said the same thing. <laughs> that's why he's getting chased. <laughs> That's why he's getting chased with a stick. 
<laughs> so the point that I'm trying to say is this is a construct. Like, look, you see those uncles do it because they're old school uncles. But catch the white dons over here. The white dons are watching like, what, what are these people doing? You see, so it's a cultural thing, isn't it? Some of those videos, I guarantee the ones that you're going to be watching, are scholars from, the, uh, from Arabia. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, whoever they are, they are people that are sharing their opinions and their cultural sensibilities from the country that they're in. So that's why it's good. You know, when you, when you watch a video about a ruling online, you have to be really careful because the question that you're asking me, I'm doing it based upon my understanding of you. Somebody online is going to misconstrue that. In fact, you know, somebody watching that video, they'll be like, why is he talking about French kissing? Stop for Allah. Do you see? But, do you see? But then, you know, I'm trying to give you an analogy to show how two cultures, how, how two cultures differ when it comes to intimacy. So, some scholars, what they'll say is, ask your local scholar. If a scholar from abroad comes and you ask him a question, if he's a scholar worthy, you know, of a high rank, that's, that scholar is going to say, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that scholar is going to say, yeah, that's, that scholar is, yeah, yeah, so that scholar is going to say, you know what, speak to your local scholar, because your local scholar is best equipped with their cultural norms. Tell me what's going I don't know, what, what does like, you know the more... Uh, Asian culture is Hanbali, like, you're, you're Pakistani. Yeah, I'm Pakistani, yeah, and Pakistanis tend to be Hanafi. Okay, so... Okay, basically, um, one guy, right, he was uh, trying to make, like, he was basically giving a dance, and he said how a woman can't go to her dad's funeral, but her husband said no. Is, is this true? Yes. Yeah, so, again, situations need to be taken into context. Now, in, in a funeral, if there's like bare man's there, yeah, and a woman's there, in a funeral, madness happens, isn't it? Like, let me give you an example. I don't know if you've been to certain funerals, but in certain, you have or you have? Yeah. In funerals, there's some cultural practices called wailing. Yeah, and when a person wails, they don't look who's around. They don't look what's going on. Like sometimes your clothes become uncovered or a person starts swinging and like it's not a place that a person should be by themselves. Now, especially if a woman's there by herself, I mean, that goes without, without, you know, if you're going somewhere, naturally, if I'm leaving the house and my wife's at home, what do you think she's going to say but before I leave the house? She's like, where are you going, isn't it? Yeah, and I'm like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I don't have to tell you where I'm going. I go wherever I want. What do you mean you go wherever you want? Just tell me where you're going. <laughs> so it's just common courtesy. But some people, what they do is like, oh, look, the man gets to this. It's not about the man this, the man that. What happens is, let me, let me give you a stat, yeah? This is the UK. A YouGov poll, it's a, it's a poll, yeah? It's a, they, they, it's a statistical method. YouGov. And it's in the UK, you can, you can YouTube this as well. Four out of five women in this country have been sexually harassed. Four out of five. Yeah? Now, in Islam, we have a system in which if you're married, rather than going to a place that can endanger you, if you're going in a place that anything can happen, go with your husband. That's, that's the safest thing to do. If there's, you know, you know, something, you know, a different situation or whatnot, then you seek the consultation of a scholar. Do you see? Again, it's coming back to a person's own situation. Online, you can't take a, you can't take a ruling, oh, this person said this on a YouTube video, therefore it applies to everybody. It doesn't work like that. You see, if your husband's not home and your mom's ill on the next street, of course you're going to go. But somebody might say in a different country in which they have a wali system, they're going to say, no, that's not allowed. Do you see? So, in Islam, we look after our women. And it's not, there's a difference here. One is looking after your, your women, and another is taking control over your women. That's different. Would you say both of them are the same? Looking after and taking control? No. But that's how it's been equated. It depends because they can go hand in hand, depending on the situation. They can go hand in hand. But typically? Typically no. Yeah, exactly. 
But what, what happens is in society, people take the extreme and they superimpose that on everything. That's not the case. But in Islam, we definitely have a system. That if, if my mom's going, for example, um, there was, the, you know whenever an, an Islamophobic attack happens, I don't let my mom just go by herself for shopping. I tell my mom, I was like, mom, after Maghrib, it's going to get peak. I know how it is. Uh, you're from South. Southeast. Yeah, you know how it is. Are you from South as well? Yeah, I'm from South as well. That's true. Oh, you know me? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave, innit? <laughs> Everyone knows it from Dave. So, so in that regard, I will tell my mom. I was like, no, wait, wait for me. I don't trust the. It's not that I don't trust you. I don't trust the people. I don't trust the people. You know what I'm saying? And if you if you're going, go go with like uh, two people, and uh, call me if, if you notice anything or if there's some safety. Four out of five people. That's mental. You know, Why aren't police? Just yesterday, even, even just yesterday. So I'm in. Uh, you know, yesterday I was trying to buy airpods before work. So yeah. I'm sorry to buy a boat, but I no, can no, see what happens. So yeah, I'm yeah. trying to buy airpods. I swear, one well, night some guy comes, he puts his hand on my back, he's like, hey, you okay? I'm just thinking, I don't even know this guy. I, I don't yeah. know this man. That's like, mad. hey, you okay? Like, on my back, like that. I'm just thinking, you know what I mean? So I feel like. It's now, now imagine. Your, your initial question was to do with marriage. I'll tell you how a man thinks, yeah? I'll tell you how a man thinks. Now, when it comes to certain women and stuff like that, what a man will do when you watch all these chapsing videos, they say, okay, so you're going, you're going, keep an eye on her from the side. If she gives you a smile, if she looks at you, that's an in. Now you need to start a combo. You need to do this, you need to do that. There's, there's entire manuals written on how to chaps women. You really think if you're by yourself, you're getting to know him. After one year. The amount that's happened where you're by yourself with him. You're in a restaurant, you know, candle. He's not going to take you to Pizza Hut for a wedding, thing, for, for a marriage. You know what I'm saying? He's going he's gonna to show off, you know. He's going to be like, you know, he's going to be doing a bit of that, getting, getting the rolly, getting the watch and all that. Come on. <laughs> he's going to be doing all that, isn't it? So... And that he's going to be flexing. You heard the term flexing, isn't it? And then sometimes, you know, you've ordered something, so your hand's there, his hand's there, they rub. All it takes is physical contact. Once physical contact's there, you know, electricity. When electricity happens, there's no, there's no one there. There's no, sister, there's no one there. Are you telling me, both of you, with electricity, candlelight, you two are looking the best. You're not going to go there with like, you know, um, shoddy lipstick and, you know, eye, eyeliner like dangling down and one, one earring just, you know, lassoing off your ear, you know what I'm saying? So in that, in that environment, that's the environment that you need somebody there that can monitor that obviously it doesn't get, doesn't get mad. So that's why this Moroccan, Asian, Arab practice, oh, get to know him. I know situations where people have gone for marriage and madness has happened. Now the man, he's, he's got what he wants from the girl and he's gone. So here's, here's the thing, anytime you want to test a man, anytime you want to test a man, he will give you anything. I'm telling you to chirp so he will give you anything. Anything you want to hear, he will tell you. You're vulnerable, easy. You're easy meat. You're crying, even better. Let's let's just, let's just say they are. They like they like that in ge in general. You still want to get married, though, innit? Yeah. You still want to. The thing is, look, even like the, the the brain of a man is different to the brain of a woman. Testosterone, the mere presence of testosterone in a person's body changes you. It changes you. Uh, Jimmy Do, yeah, he's a political commentator. He said that one of his friends transitioned. So she was a female, she transitioned into a male. And then she had hormone therapy. And he goes that because he, because it's a he now, he had all this testosterone pumped into his body. He said, when I would watch her, when I would see a female, forget, you know, the cleavage. He said, even seeing a bit of ankle would drive him nuts. Ankle, madness. You know those ankle-free socks? Game over. Game over. 
So it, that, look, that's just that what I'm trying to tell you is the anatomy. And I know the feminist thing would be, yeah, but that men need to change. Okay, men need to change. But, but what happens now? You still need to get married. And the thing is, why, why do men need to change? That testosterone, you know what that testosterone does? You know certain bodybuilders, they take testosterone in the gym. Hormones. Because that testosterone makes you, it pumps you up to take more weight. If you're taking more weight, that makes you more stronger. If you're more stronger, next time you're outside, would you want to be with somebody that someone comes to mug you and he's just there like... He starts backing off and he expects you to do something. You're gonna, you're like, oh, do one, mate. You're out the door. You can't even protect you. That, you could take that disrespect. You, you see how he's treating me? But that comes at a price. That's how men are, yeah, but that's how men are. Like, if a thief comes, you put the man forward. And when war comes, the man goes forward. When building bridges come, the man goes forward, you see? It's not haram, no. Women have gone into war. In fact, there's some like solid women that they were going mad. Yeah, yeah, battling with men, smashed it. So like fighting physically with men? Yeah, yeah. And not just like cutting up bear man, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, no joke. So yeah, of course, when it's war, it's war, isn't it? You've got to do what you've got to do. And there's plenty of examples in the seerah that we know of, of Muslim women that, that have been in war. But the point is this, saying men need to change and all that isn't going to change the situation. But to be honest, I don't agree with feminism anyway. I feel like it's always logic over whatever you want because I feel like in society, you just have different, men have different uh, types of the way women do, women, like, women do because yeah. naturally we just have some certain stuff that we just born with, we just can't help it. So for example, if I gave you a baby right now, I'd take care of that. You're, let's be wrong, you're probably not going to be as good as a woman. You're not going to be as nurturing and more like sensitive for the baby. That's how you yeah, do. exactly. Same way, if I race you right now, what are the odds I'm actually going to be? Not to be Im impossible. Not to be sexist. Absolutely impossible. I would destroy you. I will decimate you. <laughs> Honestly, what are the actual? So you know, like uh, recently. So recently, they're now putting full transgender. Uh, so transgender. What I mean, men to women. They're now playing in the Olympics and like you know races and stuff. And I thought that's. I mean, they're beating them. But are you surprised? There you go. There you go. So you hit the nail on the head. That was a very mature thing that you said. There's perks. There's perks. Like imagine. If I, I want my wife to be strong in a certain situation, she's like, oh, could you, could you, could you? Like, that, that's the wrong time to be, could you, could you, could you? Now, but women need to change it. No, women don't need to change. It's my job to take care of that situation. And then if my something wrong with my kid that I don't know, then that's where the woman and her feminine, not her femininity, but her motherly nature. Yeah, her motherly sensibilities come in that comes naturally though, because there's exactly. no, I, I don't see any women that don't nurture their kids when they see them hurt. You always find out, pick them up and start. You know? It's just the way it is. A man would be a bit more same, but just yes. a bit less. In fact, there's a hormone that gets released. You know when a woman's carrying, she actually feels... Oxytocin? No, no, no. It's one of these ones. I know the oxytocin, cortisol and these. But there's one in particular, but there's just so many, I can't keep tabs of them. But, but there's one that they, they notice even in like animals. Even in animals, that, that the animal becomes very sensitive and very prone to their kids. But after that runs out, the animal goes back in beast mode. So that, that's how it is. And as men, we have our pros and we have our cons. But when it comes to this, there's a reason. There's a reason why um, men are told, lower your gaze. Women are told, cover up. Men are also told, cover up. Don't be, if you two are alone in a room, the third will be shaitan. Because I'm telling you what the way a man saying, if I'm speaking to Ali, yeah, and I'm just being frank with you, just so you know, I'm sure you know anyway. If I'm speaking with Ali and I know that there's a, there's a sister listening, my conversation with him would, would, will change. It will change because automatically, as men, we're thinking, oh, I'm, I'm going to try and impress her, I'm going to say this, I'm going to make her laugh, I'm going to do that. Your conversation changes. Because. Exactly, exactly. So in that sort of sense, it's peak. Like even, you know, where, where you were looking. I'm not going to mention it. But, 
you know, with, with the individual that went past. That even, even Islamically, that individual needs to be told, that individual needs to be told to keep his body covered from navel to knees. You know, there was a guy with a giant six pack that was going past. Oh, that I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, that's fine. That well, that's <laughs> yeah. So that's assuming the best. I was assuming the worst. Yeah. So, so in that sense, even men are told, you know, lower the gaze. Women are told lower the gaze, and then men were told to cover up women. Too. No, 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 no. The six pack. There, there are two there and there's three there. So if you cover there, you'll only see. Like one there. It's still common now. You can, females yeah. can still come on. Because the thing is with females, boy, they like to see that kind of stuff. They like to, but statistically, if you look at the research nowadays, yeah. women actually are actually put off by six packs. Majority. Majority. Yeah. Maybe the the new, what do you call the new generation? They're not millennials, but they're Gen Z. The Gen Z might be more into that, but they're a minority. They're a minority. I feel like this society is really backwards because I remember seeing this one uh, video from 1960 or 50 where the woman, like they're interviewing like, random women saying, What do you think about this woman in a bikini? And the woman saying, She looks like uh, I can't say the word. So, yeah, yeah. She looks like a, it's, uh, I think it's absolutely disgusting. Da -da -da -da. Yes. But, but then now, even just wearing a bikini can cause you to get arrested or in trouble. But I feel like if feminism is true to itself, they would allow females to actually be like women. Do you know what I mean? I feel like it strips me of my femininity to even say I'm a feminist because it means that you're not you're now basically trying to say that my fitra of being a woman is not even like, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I can't be like you whether you like it or not and you can't be like me and that's the truth because I don't want to accept it. That's why I feel like feminine. Like, yeah, feminism just has a lot of holes in it. It's, it's, the, it's the wrong answer to the right questions. That's in a nutshell. So the right question would be, why are women being disrespected? Why are women being sexually harassed? Why are women being touched up and this and that? But then the answer, what feminism is offering, it's, it's incorrect actually. Because how old are you roughly? You don't have to give me. 19. Now, now here's the two scenarios that I'm going to give you. Yeah? One scenario, that's the feminist scenario, is going to tell you, you need to start, you know, get independent, start working and start doing your thing. Be, be independent, start working, boom, boom, boom. Yeah, that's them. Now, you start working, you start becoming independent, you start becoming more masculine. Like you become a CEO of your company. Okay, CEO. But now, what sort of man are you going to be looking for? For someone that's low level? You want somebody that at least is matching you or? That's most females anyway. No, exactly. they match me or I. That's just the way it is. Yeah, so that's called hypergamy. Women are hypergamous. They, 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 they date or they marry higher than them. Now, if somebody is a CEO, do you really think he wants somebody that is going to be at his level. There's no two CEOs, there's not two prime ministers, there's no two presidents. It's such a manly pride thing as well. Exactly. If we're being honest, because I've noticed a lot, yeah. Have you, can, can I be honest? Okay. Yeah, be honest. There's been times here yeah, where you just walk past somewhere and the guys just, just start doing this, like start like... Flexing. Flexing, I'm just thinking, what are you flexing? Anyway. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I've noticed that, so... Uh, Usually when men feel like there's females on, they'll start doing random stuff. They do, they do yeah. Oh, did you look at that? Oh, look at the, look at the skirt. Yeah. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're 100% you're right. There is a, a competition thing there as well. But the thing is, if a person takes the feminist thing now, you're a 25-year-old boss CEO. You're looking for high-value men. No high-value man wants a woman that's going to come and that's going to be meeting him head to head. Would you marry a CEO? No. Because as a high value man, I'm not saying I'm high value, but high value could mean in terms of your status in society. Yeah, it could be pay, it could be your status, maybe your celebrity or maybe your YouTuber, maybe your this, your that. If I'm going home after doing interviews, after doing videos, after doing dawah, after doing it, and I go home and I'm, 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 I'm faced with the CEO and I'm given the third degree, that's long.
What is it like? That's oh, log. Is it just a thing where you just can't? That's just you personally. It, no, no, no. It's it's a man thing because think about it. You've been you've been working and you've been earning and you've been all that. You've been doing all that. Now you go home. You have to deal with more work. More, more. You want somebody like a man. I'll tell you what a man wants. A woman wants somebody that that can protect him, that can earn, that can do all that. A man doesn't look for a woman who earns. Man wants a woman who's less. Yeah, and typically men want somebody, high value man wants somebody that's submissive, that listens, that kind of goes with him. And then there's that thing, isn't it? Like somebody gave this example. He said, a man spent years becoming a high value man, business, earning, and then he had a yacht. And then somebody went on that yacht and he said, and he saw loads of women there. And those women were Botoxed, bikini and this and that. That man spent years buying that boat. That woman just had to put makeup on, dress skimpily and she got called on. Do you see the disparity there? So if a man gets married, the man's like, okay, so I'm providing safety to you now because if something happens, you expect me to go forward. Yeah, I'm, I'm expected to bring money home because you're hypergamous. But then what are you bring to the table? Why, why is a man marrying you? The man ties are so raw though. Like, it's raw, like, it's raw. Have you, have you ever had the saying like, when you, you, have, you know, like when people are like, oh, excuse me, miss, da, 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 are your butters anyway? Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's a mad one. Yeah, that's, that's like one. a proper man pride. I've always noticed it. Man. Yeah. But I feel like, um, I don't want to say demasculates, I feel like that's the wrong word to use. But I just feel like it's just a personal thing that some men, cause some men like it. Some men like a woman that goes out and gets her money. Do you know what I mean? No, but think about it this way. So you got a man. L l let me ask you. So there's a man who doesn't bring that much money home. He's, he's not your typical man, like he's not strong. Yeah, he won't be able to defend you. Mentally or physically? Physically. Physically, physically he can't defend you. He's not bringing that much money home. Yeah, but, you, uh, but you're, you're equal. You're, you're equal in that regard and he respects you. You got that option. And then you got the other option where he can, he can protect you. He can bring in money. But there, there's a few issues here and there. What would you, what would you most likely go for? To be honest, a guy that can financially be stable. But I, I'm not looking for like, obviously. No, I'm not saying you. I'm no, saying no, just general. In females, no, females generally go on. Females like a guy that has money. Because girls naturally just like to be spoiled. It's just the way we are. But, but then a man also doesn't like competition either. You see, you said yourself, you're going past him and he's like, <laughs> one of those ones, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's just randomly. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what he's doing. Well, I so, can get loud on their conversations as well. Exactly. Females do that as well, but not just men. They do, they do, yeah. But with men, they're more promiscuous than women. Like, they, like, like we were talking the testosterone and all of that, it would change the mentality of the mind. Well, the man, even the brain, like the the size of the amygdala in a man is bigger than a woman. Even when a woman, when a man sees something sexually suggestive and a woman sees something sexually, sexually suggestive, the man's amygdala reacts more than the female's amygdala. So what is it? Can, I'm sorry to be so like, uh, raw, raw, like in my conversation, but I don't get it. So men, can they control themselves in a sense of sexually? In some situation they can't, no. How can you not? So it's like, you're not higher ones, how can you? So like in a situation, a guy sees, okay, let's say, here you're going to find some girls in like bikinis or like pop tops or like a lot of people just normal in this country. But let's say a man does, does see, I'm surely he's able to control himself. That's why I gave you the statistic. Four out of five women have been sexually harassed. You tell me, does that sound like men controlling themselves? So what, in what situations can like, I don't get it because I feel like... Let me give you an example. Yeah. If I'm dangling meat in front of a tiger and then the tiger comes and I start slapping the tiger away, what are you doing? Control yourself. Any average individual watching would be like, why are you doing that? It's like Quran burning. You go to a, 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 and it's a Muslim area, you start burning the Quran, you expect the Muslims to just stand there, go, hmm, that's bad. That's very bad. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? It's the same. A woman goes with the bits and bobs dangling about, stands in front of a man, so don't look at me, respect who I am. <laughs> you see, you see, when you break it down, 
It's like, no, you need to respect me. Why are you looking down? My face is up here. Why aren't you respecting me? You're like, don't. Yeah, but even for females, because like yeah. you said, that six pack guy, even though I was looking at him, yeah, yeah. you mentioned that I just see some big D guys. Exactly. You know, <laughs> if you see someone, you know, when like people say, oh, why are you even looking down there? I'm like, well, not down there, well, yeah. not me in general, but you know, someone's dressed in a certain way, or I'm not saying we should look, it's of course haram, I know, but it's in front of you, you can't be not. Exactly. You know that, I mean? That's why Islam gives a two pronged response. Number one, lower your gaze. And number two, dress appropriately. So if a person, obviously they're looking up, they have to live their life. When they look up, nothing's going to cause issues. Do you see? Okay, so when men wear tight stuff, does that not... Is that, is yeah, that that's against hijab. It's against the hijab of a man. It's against the hijab of a man. It's not allowed. Because some men, I'm, I'm going to be so honest Skinny jeans, some skinny people, jeans. Some men are actually on purpose to like, try, like, you know, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So would that, that would go against the hijab? Yes, against the hijab, yeah. Okay. The whole little Wayne Ugg boots and skinny jeans and all that. Yeah, 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 Ugg boots. Uh, yeah, I forgot that we're Ugg boots. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's crazy. The madness sometimes. Just, just things are just uh, going on their head. And that's why it comes down to this, the, the marriage thing. It, as soon as you mention the word marriage and speak to my dad, you just see, see the man. Just see how his tone changes. Their tone is going to change. Don't trust the man because we've already discussed that a man in that situation you can't control. And I know, and I'm not saying from oh, an Islamic point of view. No, you gov poll says four out of five women have been sexually harassed. Kira Knightley, the one of the actresses from um, Pirates of the Caribbean, she said that pretty much every celebrity actress that she knows has been sexually harassed. It's peak and they go with makeup and all that. What, what do you expect? You know? But, okay, but can you be real here? Because I, I'm going to be so honest with you. I love your discussions. I love what you're bringing because it makes sense to me. And I, I can, I'm learning from this. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. But uh, what I find really weird in general, you know when a woman gets raped, God forbid, any woman gets raped, I always hear, but what was she wearing? What was she wearing? I feel like regardless of what she was wearing, it's still, you can't just do that. Do you know, do you know what I mean? I absolutely agree with you. That's not the first response. The first response, you have to balance things. Wearing and raping. I'm sorry, but one crime is more than the other. And the crime of rape, that's why in Islam, there's no joke when it comes to rape. So what is the punishment for rape? If you, in, in a Sharia country, you, um, and, and you, you rape somebody, it's is death. But then you need four witnesses, because if there's no four witnesses, and you say that guy uh, raped me, you get slapped like uh, whipped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if, if, it's wit if there's witnesses and if it's been proven, like witnesses in those days. But the thing is, obviously society has changed. You've got forensic evidence, you've got other forms of evidence. In those days, of course, they didn't have all this, isn't it? If you don't have any witnesses, I don't get it. What's then the, forensic evidence. But what's the odds? CCTV. Now nah, back in the day, because what are the odds? Someone's going to rape someone in broad daylight, or rape someone in a place where there's four people, especially. Them. So how would they have proved that back then? Because if I... To be honest, the Prophet Sallallahu said, to the nearest meaning, that you get rid of these bad practices by hudud by these punishments of death, of lashing, of whipping and stoning and all this sort of stuff. It was a deterrent. Now, if I tell you that if you lean on this, you're, we're going to get three horses and they're going to trample all over you. You're going to be very careful. If I say, oh, if you lean on this, I'm going to throw a juicy, juicy fruity chewing gum at you. Do you see? Now, imagine if I say, in fact, another example, uh, if you if you go and give that policeman a wedgie, yeah, give him a really big, no, I gave that deliberately, <laughs> give him a wedgie, then that's really bad. You're going to be taken to jail. We're going to feed you. We're going to give you a change of clothing. We're going to make sure, you know, you're healthy and you, you've got a place to eat and you're going to have friends there and you get to the gym. Does that sound like a deterrent to you? That's the prison system today. Actually, I can't say something coming up. Yeah, but, well, if you think it's going to get you in trouble, then avoid it. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah. I'll tell you often, but um, the prison system here, all I'm going to say is they are quite spoiled. They are? They're, they're really spoiled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll say, that. I'll say that for you. The prison system today is inadequate. 
Yeah, it's inadequate. In fact, I know people at Christmas time, they deliberately get arrested just so they'll have somewhere to sleep and they'll have a free, uh, free meal for the night. Do you know what it is? And you know who's paying for it? The no, Saxons, exactly. But the thing is, right, so what I've noticed is, uh, you, know, you know, I have Snapchat, right? And I just scroll through Snapchat and I can see random people taking pictures in jail. I'm just thinking, yeah. how does that even... Cause, do you see? Do you know what is? The drug system here is, uh, you, can, you can supply cocaine, you can supply weed, but you're going to get like 15 years, 20 years, 30 years. You rape a woman, you admit to it, you do 50% of the sentence. And half of the time, so that's 10 years. So you're doing five years for raping someone. Do, do you know what I mean? If you admit to the, your crime, you do 50% of your... Time, so I feel like a lot of stuff that doesn't happen. It's a joke. I'll say it's a joke. The system is a joke. And I'll tell you why it's a joke. If you take down a political statue in this country, the Churchill statue, you'll get eight to ten years. For raping, four to five years. Sometimes it's less. Sometimes I like, there you go. just two years there you go. because they're mentally ill or whatever, they just get bailed out or something, you know what I mean? And people laugh at the male hijab. Men are getting raped as well. It's not funny. You know, men, you know, and I hear stuff like that. I don't think it's funny because men can go through stuff like that as well. And you know, most of the rapes are happening in LGBT households. It's happening amongst homosexuals, yeah. mostly lesbians. Have you heard about that guy that raped over 45 young kids? It was really long ago in like the news. He was, uh, if you've noticed, um, I've noticed a lot that men that do get raped, they suffer more trauma than women because they're more likely to not speak about it, do you understand? Yeah, men are crazy. If they, it's, it, it, it's ruthless. Like, even when they're going, you know, majority of the suicides are done by men as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, more than women, they commit suicide more than women. Because, exactly. But I feel like um, men have this taboo where they just feel like they can't express like how they feel. I feel like to an extent, you can't just go around weeping and crying like, like you know, be like, oh, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what yeah, yeah, exactly. I feel like uh, as, as long as he's, he's able to express himself and say what happened to him, I feel like that's manly as it is, do you understand? Because I feel like a real manly man would express that this happened to me actually. So I feel like it's really sad that men have to go through that. And now men are, that manliness is being suppressed more. You're seeing these emojis and these uh, stories of, of, of pregnancies, pregnant men and women, uh, sorry, pregnant men, and there's, there's certain mentions of, of uh, hormone suppressors and, you know, uh, crying and this and that. So the, the whole masculinity, that's why people say masculinity is under attack as well. But going back to that whole, because I want you to take something today as well, that, you know, when, when somebody says, no, 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 that's all right, get to know him and this and that. I'm telling you, those few meetings that you're going to have initially, that's not him. That's actually not him. Yeah, he's going to be impressing you, he's going to be trying to, and once he gets that one thing that you're offering, he's gone. So is he's it, gone. Is it true that men after that happens, they just, so how do I explain it? Like they get what they want and they suddenly lose feelings, I don't know how to explain it. Is that like a real thing? Or? Yeah, yeah it's, it's called post-ejaculation post post ejaculation guilt. Sorry to be frank. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mashallah. All right, auntie. Cheers. So, uh, so, it's, so it's called, it's called, yeah, what, what I just said. So uh, straight after that happens, a person comes to their senses. A person comes to their senses. That's why even Islamically, if a person is married and they, you know, they're out and about and they see something inappropriate, Islamically, we're told, go, go to your wife. Yeah, rather than doing it out and about. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. <laughs> so, so in that in that regard, Islam, mashallah, is actually good for society. It keeps us, you know, you have that affection rather than doing it with other women. Go, go, go to your wife. Give that affection to your wife. You see, yeah, the the one that you know you, you're supposed to be with. You know, look after her and do this sort of stuff. But but when you speak to non-Muslim, they're able to frame it in such a way. No, Islam says that a, a woman's supposed to go with a man. No. Islam says that a woman has a 24-7 bodyguard. Islam says that a man's supposed to be a man. You look after yourself. Yeah, like even the, the, the companions were getting ready for prayer and then Umar was going past and one companion had a bit of a, you know, a one pack. Yeah, and Umar was, what's, what's that? What are you doing? 
So even as men, we, we're supposed to look after ourselves. You know, you expect a woman to look after herself, you look after yourself as well. So in that regard, it's, it's very important. But coming back to the feminist thing, because I'm, I'm remembering these things that we've discussed. So you've got, do you see like the woman that's going after her career, she's high value, but she wants a high value man. The high value man doesn't want a high value woman. Yeah, so if a woman, you know, she, but, but that's the narrative that's being pushed from feminists. But then you know what happens? In order to, in order to counteract that, in order to counteract that, no, no, sorry. In order to counteract that, if something happens, I'll tell you to move, down. No, 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 it's not that. It's just thinking, what are they even arguing about? Yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's going to go to fisticuffs, isn't it? But what are they even arguing about? Sometimes it's pathetic. There was a 12-year war at the time of the Arabs because one camel beat another camel in a race. Yeah, 12-year war before the Prophet came. Then the Prophet came and he civilized these people. Some people are still uncivilized, it seems. Yeah, so in that regard, it's sometimes it's about, you know, getting to know the opposite gender and feminism. You know what they say? When a, when a woman now can't find someone, who's to say you need to get married? Go out, you want something from a man, take it from a man. But then she becomes pregnant. What happens then? That's why, why do you think, look at these abortion rights. Who's at the forefront? The feminists. Why? Because they have to be. Because they're telling the women to be promiscuous. Be promiscuous, get out there, be, be in their face, you're equals. But you tell me, if a woman and a man, look, why do you follow football? Which team? No, no, I don't follow football, so. I actually support Chelsea. Chelsea, okay. Well, it's good. I, I don't need to kill you because Liverpool killed you guys anyway. <laughs> they did the job, in it? So I don't need to do anything. So, but with, with Chelsea, how come there's no woman there? Because you can't, you can't physically, I can't. Imagine, you know, you know when Ronaldo goes down, he does one of those dives, Ronaldo dives. Imagine if the men do a mad slide tackle on a woman. The thing is, if you are so physically evil, I can literally box you. I don't know what. I don't like wrestling boxing. Come on, let's go. I probably might be. Yeah. yeah, in La La Land. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So, there you go. There you go. So, so in that regard, I mean that. That's why we see that when feminists are saying, no, 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 go, go, go head to head, do them. Da, da, the man doesn't want that woman. Because that's what the... Look, a man is around other men. He doesn't want another woman that's going to be challenging him every step of the way. You want somebody that you can take care of. You can look after, that's going to look after your kids, that can bring something new to the table. Why do you want to marry somebody that's, that's another carbon copy of you? I like with feminism. It's, this is the only way I could put it into my head if it wasn't action, right? So imagine I go up to you right now and I slap you across the face and you slap me back. I'm like, look what this guy done to me. I feel like that's the only way I could put feminism back, if that makes sense. I feel like if a girl comes to you and she hits you, she keeps hitting you, I feel like you have, depending on how, how old she is or if you can control it, but if a woman, a grown woman, and let's say I'm like, I go up to you and I start slapping you and punch you, like, mm. you have every right to knock me out. And a lot of people are going to get mad at me saying that, but it's actually true because, do you understand? Know what, what would you do in that situation in general if it was to happen? Well, that's, that's the thing. Remember when Jay-Z got slapped by Beyonce's sister in the lift? They, they said, respect to Jay-Z. If Jay-Z did something in that situation, he would have been cancelled. He would have been finished. And imagine if it was, you know, the Will Smith slap on Chris Rock. Imagine if Chris Rock was a woman. You see? So, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, dispa there's a lot of disparity. There's, yeah, there's a lot of disparity happening there. Yeah, there's a lot of disparity. And uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's very peak. So, look, the, at, at the end of the day, I, I'm, I even saw one somebody just see a woman on the side and he just started chirping her. Yeah, I saw that. Chirping meaning chatting her up. He just did that now. Yeah, yeah, he just did that off camera. So, so in that in that sense, that's that. Like even look, you said yourself you were there at the shop and somebody came and put the hand on you. That's that's mad. 
Why, why the hell should he be touching me like that? Yeah, you see? Of course I want to slap the hell out of him. I thought it was like a friend or something because we said what else he was going to come and touch me. So I just thought it was my friend. Some random, random guy. He sees me at the airport and he's like, do you want to pay for it for you? I'm just thinking no. Mm. So I some other man you know you guys like, like to... You guys, the thing is with men, yeah, you might get offended. But you lot would happily go broke to prove a point. Do you know what Heavily? I mean? You guys would happily go broke to prove a point. Heavily go to? Happily go Happily broke go broke. broke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, a man will work. Why is the man working? So he can get a car. Why is he getting a car? To impress the women. I was getting a watch to, to, to promote, uh, to impress a woman. Why is he doing this to promote a woman? Sorry, to, um, you know, make himself seem a certain way to women. So in that sense, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. But as soon as you mention nikah, you say marriage, let's talk marriage. Yeah? Let's, let's, let's talk marriage. Yeah? Let's talk, um, let's speak to my father. Yeah? Let's do this. That's when, if the guy's serious, He'll be like, okay, I'm ready. If the guy's like, yeah, nah, you know what? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow, let's, let, let's do it tomorrow. He's not the right one. Yeah, yeah, let me get you AirPods. You know what he wants after the AirPods? That's, that's what he wants. You think you're just going to pay for free? Yeah, nothing's free. Yeah, nothing is free. Kids are taught this in primary schools. Somebody gives you even chicken and chips. That's not free. Even a, a, a sample, drugs. I have to have this on me. I see you're, you're stressed and everything, ecstasy tablet. Take that. Wow. Whoa. And then two days later, yeah, can I get that tablet again? Yeah, it, it'll be 60 pounds. Whoa, it's gone up. Yeah, of course, that was a taster. So, look, be very careful. I think you, you understand how these things work, but sometimes our cultures are very naive. Let me, let me give you an example, yeah? You know, majority of the illicit relations that happen are, let's just say, if I'm married with a woman, yeah, and I statistically, if she cheats on me, it's gonna be with my brothers because my brothers are around more. And if a child is to be abused, a child is most likely to be abused by his uncle or their aunt because they are the people that are trusted. Yeah, they're the people that are trusted. So be very careful when you're when you're family and friends say, no, no, it's okay, just get to know him, say, look, there's a reason. If Islam tells us, make sure you have a wali. Make sure in that situation, be careful. So it's, if, you, if we decide you want to marry this person, do you bring your dad with you or your brother? Okay, so let's just say you, you're, you're in uni, yeah, and you, you like somebody. What you do is you can tell somebody who can then speak to him. Normally in uni, somebody can come to you and approach you directly. Yeah, but if they don't mention father, if they don't mention your family, the person's got wrong intentions. Yeah, so you have to be careful, even at work. Yeah. You? <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that. He, uh, he got off lightly. So, so in that sense, that's, that's what it is, isn't it? That always put them to the test because we've already established a woman is looking for something different, a man is looking for something different. A man will go for looks, a man will go for submissiveness. A woman will go mostly for status. Yeah. Go for status and for wealth. These are, these are the two main things that they go for. Thank you so much. No, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. I uh, know it's a bit of a mad one. I always here. come to gain knowledge because I thought that's the best thing. No, 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 no. So like gain oh, definitely. Yeah, sister, anytime you see us around, see Ali around, you're more than welcome because as everybody's here, you've got brothers that are listening, they can benefit as well. So you don't have to worry and you can be frank inshallah. Yeah, my pleasure.